after a problem has been identified then go on to a feasibility study uh, as mentioned before identifying a problem is really sorting out what the issues are involved and figuring out what has to be done this is where you go on to the answering the question of is it going to be possible to do that so as the question of what is a feasibility study I think this is a decent decent enough definition um, especially in terms of um, determining if a problem can be solved effectively if you're looking for an analogy um, you may go to a doctor's and he may be able to diagnose what the problem is it doesn't mean to say that he will come up with um, a way of solving uh, that particular problem effectively um, it may be that the he can diagnose it but he doesn't know essentially how to cure it I think the question says it all for this one um, is the solution technically possible there's all sorts of examples you could give for this for instance if somebody's looking for a particular disk drive that of such a magnitude that doesn't exist then it's not going to be possible and the, in the notes that are given it talks about a robot fitting into dimensions and there's many many examples you can think of so long as you've got it clear in your head as regards is it going to be possible technically to do this with the current technology that exists economic aspects put bluntly is simply the the fact of whether um, the costs involved in producing this solution that you're going to outline that's going to um, fix the problem is it re are they really going to be too high is the actual if it's a physical thing is the actual um, cost of producing this physical thing so great or the implementation of this so great that in fact it's not really feasible to do it um, or can the cost which often happens in business be passed on to the customer will that mean that the actual cost of the the item that's produced is it just too high so an economic consideration and I've tried to highlight this by the image that's there by saying it isn't bo a bottomless pit of money it may be that a particular organization is willing to throw a lot of money at something but they're not going to throw limitless amounts at it and um, that's just not economically viable so the economic aspects is regarding um, the cost of actually coming up with the solution to the problem again this is one where the the question says it all there's got to be enough skilled people to to run the solution that you're intending to put in place and whether it's feasible or not or not to um, have a particular solution implemented is going to depend on whether you have got the people that are skilled enough to run that system it may not be that the there are none of those people it could be that you just can't get out of those people they're just there's just not enough of them or getting out of them would involve paying such large amount of money that it's economically not feasible so there can be an overlap in the economics here as well but it's really answering that question are there enough skilled people and that it's not not just the people you currently employ but the people in the marketplace as well so on to social consequences now social uh, can represent all sorts of different things depending on the context you're putting it in here the most obvious question you're going to be asked and the focus of uh, this particular uh, determination of social consequences is really about for the workforce regarding losing jobs regarding the community that it works in is it going to cause unemployment is it going to cause redundancy and that's really um, how systems analysis will be defined in this context however I do did think it was worth listing a couple of other other points there as regards the government and environmental indeed nowadays as well um, but I'm happy for you to just um, focus on uh, the fact as whether people are going to lose their jobs it's as simple as that in the last of these um, particular aspects of feasibility study it's a look at cost benefit analysis and there is of course some overlap here with the economic aspects but the real question here is when it comes down to it do the costs outweigh the benefits or do the benefits outweigh the costs in other words are you going to get so much more profit from this that it outweighs any costs you have to stump up does it increase the profitability overall of the company by doing this if it does then it's going to be worth it 
if it's not and the costs outweigh the profits altogether then you've got to ask yourself is it worth continuing now and that's something that a systems analysis is going to have to go back to um, the the customer and say look I'm not sure that this is really going to be worth it because here's the figures and here's what it's going to cost you and here's what I think that you're going to make extra or the profitability of the company is going to go up like this or overall in the long term your costs are going to go down despite the initial cost of um, the change over to the new system and all these kinds of things so really a cost benefit analysis look at the words cost benefit analysis if you don't do business then uh, I suggest you look that up on the internet as regards what is cost benefit analysis of course if you do do business then this is something you will have covered and this is the last of the um, feasibility studies and you should now be pretty clear on all the elements that are um, involved in a feasibility study and the points of view really